Hey everyone, Kirby Fan here, back in action for another copy ability spotlight. I love the interaction that these videos get, so as always, comment below to tell me which copy ability you want to see in the next spotlight. The deadline this time is going to be August 12th, 2020, so if you're watching after that date, or you just want an idea for what to comment about, tell me what you think about Hammer. Do you like it? After watching, was it better or worse than you were expecting it to be? I love hearing this stuff, so don't be shy. Trust me, I don't bite. Reportedly, liking and subscribing helps me out too, so if you like my stuff, do that while you're at it. Now with all that out of the way, let's get started with the spotlight. For those who have been around the channel for a while, you may remember something I said in my copyability tier list video. Hammer, oh boy, um... Uh, I speedrun, I, uh, I speedrun, I, I have to put it in the top tier. That right there should tell you all that you need to know about this spotlight, but even if you have no idea who I am, well, hi. But also, Hammer is rather infamous for how powerful it is. Hammer seemingly has a complete chokehold over the boss fighting side of optimized Kirby. For movement, you can point to several different abilities that the community recognizes as excellent, but for boss fighting, you're commonly only going to hear about Hammer. And while I'd love to say that this is a lead up into me saying it's good for any percent, for the most part, it really is not. I'll cover exceptions as they come, but for the most part, this video is going to be dissecting Hammer Kirby and how it does against bosses. Does it deserve all the praise that it gets? Only one way to find out. Let's talk Hammer. Okay, all of that said, there's a lot to go over today, so I'm formatting this episode a little differently. Instead of going over every game in chronological order, I'll be quickly brushing over the games that Hammer isn't very good in, in chronological order, and then going into the ones where it is really good, in chronological order, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rather inconsistent, unlike, say, Plasma, which I covered last time. So, for starters, let's get the most predictable one out of the way. Hammer is an ability that does, in fact, exist in Kirby's Adventure. Is it Tornado? Well, let's take a look at the letters real quick. Uh, hammer. Uh, this starts with H, and then the Tornado. Uh, and that one starts with a T, so looking at the evidence... Uh, of course it's not very good in Adventure! In case this is your first copy ability spotlight, well, welcome aboard. Didn't I do a joke like that already today? But also, Tornado is by far the best ability in Kirby's Adventure. Everything an ability would need to be good in that game specifically is what Tornado has. Hammer's got good damage, but there's no point in using it when Tornado isn't really all that much weaker. So is it better off in Nightmare in Dreamland? Not, not, not really, no. It has a different issue, actually. It's got it better than Tornado, at least. But the three boss killers in Nightmare in Dreamland are Spark, Sword, and Ball. They're all better at dealing high damage much quicker than Hammer, and in the Forma 2's case, they're even easier to use due to better defensive utility and range respectively. As for Ball, that one's kind of a bit more complicated, so when it gets its own spotlight, I'll go into more detail then. Amazing Mirror does actually see Hammer being used, uh, but uh, it isn't Hammer. It's weird, but the hammer that's being used is the Smash Hammer, not Hammer Kirby. Yes, it's different. If you played Amazing Mirror, you know what I'm talking about. As for Squeak Squad, as a boss killer, it's still outclassed by faster damage dealing abilities, but truth be told, most of these are actually outclassed by Wheel anyway, which provides some of the fastest movement out of any ability in any Kirby game. When you're outclassed by the outclassed, that's gotta hurt. Ouch. Kirby Fighters Deluxe doesn't have that well of a developed meta, but Hammer Strengths in general play much better to a single player game than a multiplayer fighting game. In the community tier list, Hammer is tied for third from the bottom with Whip. While it has good damage, it's slow and it's easy to work around. Simple enough. The same flaw applies to it in both Team Kirby Clash Deluxe and Super Kirby Clash, although it does very well against grounded enemies in these games. Sword Hammer Beam Beam is arguably the best team combination, and aside from Time Freeze, Hammer is your main source of damage output with this setup. What holds it back is just how slow it is. Aerial enemies in the late game of both TKCD and SKC, acronyms make me sound much fancier than I actually am, become really common, and Hammer struggles the most with these. Most players are just going to run all beam anyway, so despite some very promising potential, Hammer still falls short of these two. Alright, that was pretty quick I think. Now it's time to talk about the games that Hammer is actually good in. 
I'm sure you've noticed that, for the main series games at least, they've all had one thing in common so far. They're all games that have a limited move pool for their abilities. Hammer's cool and all, but when a lot of people think about it, they think about moves other than the normal hammer nail. Which is a very good attack in its own right, don't get me wrong, but only when combined with the other moves that make Hammer the best ability in the series for boss fights. Yeah, I really wasn't fooling any of you, was I? Hammer is ridiculous. As soon as Kirby's Superstar gave Hammer a full move set, well, actually it was not the best in this game, but it was among the best in this game. It only lost to a very small handful of abilities as far as quickly beating bosses. Plasma is one of them, and I discussed that in the previous spotlight. Again, got a plug. But even though it isn't the best, Hammer's raw power is enough to make it one of the best. As for other good moves in Hammer's kits, there's actually the normal Hammer Nail. It's fast, it's strong, and it hits both above and in front of Kirby. For boss killing, it really does all you need it to do. The only other major note here is Hammer Throw. Believe it or not, it deals the same damage as Hammer Flip, despite being faster and, obviously, having far better range. The drawback is that after you use this move, you lose Hammer. What this means is, for Tass, it's really easy to abuse, considering you can destroy health bars and just get Hammer back in the rest area. But I won't be counting this towards Hammer's viability overall. We're only looking at what's practical here, not unrealistic, even if it does save time. All of that, though, doesn't even begin to compare to how absurdly strong Hammer is in Superstar Ultra. Other abilities? Pfft, no! Hammer is the only ability in this game that matters against bosses. You can see this by comparing it to any percent, or in Ultra's case, Beat Revenge of the King, where, because you need mobility for levels, you have to use Jet. It's so optimized to a point where you can clear bosses really quickly, and even then, it still got nothing on Hammer Flip. I mean Hammer. Uh, wait, no, 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 I was right the first time. The range of Hammer Flip in Superstar Ultra was buffed immensely, which was really the only change that it needed. Hammer's other moves were left untouched without any major changes. Well, and one other factor, while it got heavily buffed, the best boss killers from Superstar all got nerfed. Plasma couldn't be charged in 14 frames anymore, TAC can't deal damage as quickly or consistently anymore, Wheelie Rider got its damage adjusted, and the other good abilities were either only good under TAS, only good against a select few bosses, or were Jet, which as stated is good and all, it just doesn't even come close to Hammer. Some system changes, such as general damage output, also affected how good Hammer was, but these are the more interesting ones to talk about. So how insane is Hammer in this game? It's possible to clear the true arena in under three minutes. Only Hammer. Uh, well, there are some shenanigans with Mike of all things at the beginning, but from there, it's nothing but Hammer Flip doing its thing, guest starring the rest of Hammer's moveset. Due to how thoroughly it destroys every other ability in this regard, Helper to Hero included, you could argue that this is the best that Hammer has ever been. While it's certainly gotten more tools over the years, and in directly comparing it to the later games, obviously it comes up a bit short, but judging it on the metric of how it compares to every other ability in its own game, yeah, I would say this version of Hammer is the best. It even has some minor application in any percent. It's very bare bones in the original, really only being used against the computer virus in Milky Way Wishes, but in Ultra, it's used against just about every boss in said mode, except for this first one where you have to use Jet. If Jet and Hammer were available in the same level, it'd be different, but hey, what can you do? You gotta save time. It's also, obviously, used to beat Mask Day to Day in Revenge of the King. Unlike Meta Knight, where you have to make a helper, get sword, get rid of sword, and get your ability back, you, you just use Hammer, and you win. Yay. Alright, going over Ultra took a little while, but don't relax just yet, because Return to Dreamland is where the copy abilities went bonkers. <laughs> bonkers. <laughs> Hammer isn't the only overpowered ability anymore. Abilities that are good for any percent, like Wing, Ice, and Parasol, all had crazy amounts of optimization put into them. In Parasol's case, it's even better versus Fatty Puffer than Hammer is. For Ice, it's better against both HRD3 and Magalor, while Wing beats it against Landia. And of course the main game, Wing in Return to Dreamland is insanely good. But despite having actual competition, Hammer is still the best ability for clearing out the bosses. And, humorously enough, it's for the exact same reason as in Ultra. Hammer Flip is seriously just that good. 
The Charging Period is now a multi-hit attack, and while it sounds nice on paper, it winds up doing almost identical damage to normal Hammer Flip, and it requires more setup than just use Hammer Flip and profit. Still a notable buff though, and it does get used every now and then. The more important change to Hammer's kit was the addition of Hammer Twirl, giving Hammer a grounded option that deals good damage and grants it invincibility. Return to Dreamland was when invincibility became a common thing with abilities, and Hammer not having any would... I don't know, even the playing field or something? <laughs> we can't have that. So a grounded, instant, strong attack with invulnerability was given to it. I mean, trust me, it's no Hammer Flip or anything, but considering how bosses work in this game, it's a welcome addition. And while it's true that Hammer isn't the best ability for every boss fight individually, put them all together in the arena and more importantly, the true arena, and Hammer once again shines brightest. Only three abilities in this game can get through in under seven minutes, and Hammer's got the number two, Ninja, beaten by 12 whole seconds. In a speedrun setting, 12 seconds is a lot of time. Most of what makes Hammer so good translates into Triple Deluxe, except, believe it or not, it got a major buff. Indirectly. Hammer, for the most part, was left unchanged, and any changes to it aren't very important, but what is important is that the boss is in triple deluxe moving between the background and the foreground. It's the reason why everyone hates Pyribit as much as they do, but what if I told you it was possible to beat Pyribit in 53 seconds? Sounds unimpressive? Yeah, that's why everyone hates Pyra, but the fight is terrible! What Hammer does better than any other ability is beat bosses before they can spend too much time in the background. Many abilities in this game suffer because they simply don't do enough damage to get through bosses quickly, but damage is the name of the game for Hammer and all. Remember in Return to Dreamland where Ninja was only 12 seconds ahead of it? Not bad in regular terms, but for speedrunning, kinda crazy how far off that is. The number two for this game, Parasol, is 30 seconds away. That is a lot of time. Speaking of time, while Hammer still serves minimal purpose in any percent, Triple Deluxe's bonus mode has you timed as you speed through levels with Day to Day. I didn't mention him during Return to Dreamland because he's strictly worse Hammer, but considering his moveset is essentially just Hammer, I can mention him here. And it's what you'd expect. Uh, lots of Hammer swing for the levels, bosses die fast, the works. On the topic of him, he's also an air ride, but you don't really use day to day or Meta Knight in air ride at all. Kind of pointless to bring them up. So, uh, would you believe me if I told you that Hammer got yet another indirect buff in Planet Robobot? All right, listen. When a boss would get hit in the previous games, they would have a short bit of invincibility before they could be hit again for full damage. This was never a problem because of Hammer Flip, but in situations where using Giant Swing, the aerial spinning attack would be better for speed. It just wasn't because Hammer Flip was just that strong, the invincibility thing, all that came together most of the time to make it not as worth it. Planet Robobot took that away, and because of that, we get this. Needless to say, the damage it does now absolutely wipes the floor with anything that Hammer Flip could do, but that doesn't suddenly make Hammer Flip bad. Bosses in this game still move into the background, and oftentimes, it's still the best option for when they're coming back into the foreground. But for the most part, Giant Swing gets the job done far better. Between these two moves and Hammer Swing, for some faster movement when needed, this is the other main contender for the best hammer in the entire series. Moveset-wise, I don't think any ability compares even close. Hammer in Superstar Ultra is the best due to any lack of competition for an alternative, but these three moves with this game's damage system and engine make this hammer unbelievably powerful. Unlike with Triple Deluxe, this indirect buff affected a lot more abilities than last time, so it did receive some extra competition, but it's still the undisputed best. Just, just look at it. Planet Robobot has an infamously long true arena, and Hammer is the only ability to have it cleared in under 11 minutes. And yes, if you've played Planet Robobot's True Arena, you know what I'm talking about. It's that good. To take a quick detour into the spin-offs, Hammer is also good for Kirby Battle Royale. That said, ignoring the modes that take the same amount of time no matter how you play them, it's only really good for Robobonkers. Considering this almost always plays out like a mini-boss, this should really come as no surprise, but it's a lot more difficult to use well than the other best ability for this fight, Sword. 
in a normal speedrun, it's recommended to use Sword not because it's faster, but because it's a lot easier and saves time on menu navigation. If you're really good with Hammer in this game, and can make up for the difficulty in menu time with raw skill, Hammer is the best option here compared to Sword. Ignoring Robo Bonkers, it's either outclassed or it just doesn't save you any time. And considering this is a multiplayer game, it does suffer from a lot of the same problems that it did in Fighters Deluxe, so it's best to just stick with it for Robo Bonkers and that's it. And finally, we've reached the end, Kirby Star Allies. Many abilities received changes in this game to better fit the friend system, most of which I won't go over purely for the sake of time, but the biggest change Hammer received was the friend system itself. Starting with the positives, Bonkers is the friend for Hammer. Bonkers has more range than Hammer Kirby, so this is good. Day to Day is also a dream friend, and he basically has the same range as Bonkers, but also has more moves. When talking about the ultimate choice, as well as guest star allies, I'll be talking about Day to Day for this instead of Hammer Kirby or Bonkers. For guest star allies, he's alright. I've mostly refrained from talking about going through the actual levels with Hammer, since, as stated at the very beginning, that's never been what Hammer was meant to do. And don't get me wrong, Day to Day has an advantage here over Bonkers, considering he has the extra moves, especially that super Day to Day jump that they added as DLC, I love that, but traversing through levels has never really been Hammer's strong suit. It's clearing out bosses. Oh no, it's outclassed for clearing out bosses. Yeah, it finally happened. Because of the friend system, Hammer is no longer the champ for beating down bosses. It isn't the end of the world because it's still among the best, just not the cream of the crop anymore. When Star Allies first came out, of course, it was business as usual. Thanks to the elements, it could even deal more damage. Ice was preferred since it freezes normal enemies, and when all the normal enemies are frozen, it immediately progresses the fight, rather than let it linger for a little while like every other ability. There was some theory crafting about Meta Knight being better, but all of the best times were still for Dead Day. Then Air Bomb Spam was discovered. Then we saw what Sizzle Bomb could do to bosses too small to use Air Bomb Spam on. Then everyone remembered Rick and Koo give those exact elements. Then more Dream Friends got added that dealt more damage. Yeah, it seems like Hammer finally got power crept. Took long enough. So, with everything said, we come back to the original question posed at the start. Was Hammer as strong, as powerful as it was made out to be, or was it overhyped all this time? I won't lie, it's definitely a lot more inconsistent than some other abilities, but speaking truthfully, the consistent ones are very rarely the best. Sure, Hammer didn't start that great, and as of Star Allies, it finally started to fall off a little bit, but the hype Hammer gets is absolutely worth it. It's never been a star for any percent, but it was never made to be. It was made to destroy bosses, and at its best, no ability could even hope to compare. Hammer is busted. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for watching this spotlight to the end. Now, there's a lot to be said about Hammer, but with the speedrunning focus bits out of the way, feel free to let me know what you think about Hammer personally down in the comments below. Now, I know plenty of people like Hammer precisely because of how good it is, but regardless of the reason, I'd love to hear it. And if you like Kirby, stick around for August, because every day of the month, I'll have a Kirby video being released. Maybe I'll even have a special copy ability spotlight? Hmm.